unbreakable command of all of the numbers, statistics, and, you know, strategy, wherever you just happen to be. Oh, no, are we on Harpy again? <laughs> no! Stop! Why are we on Harpy? I swear they do that just to torture us. Uh, that's something right. I always say about the salted harpy pick is that when she goes, may I sing? You go, no, 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 please don't. Yeah, see, that's the, the voice acting. Oh, boy. That's what we're talking about. I think one of the weirdest things to me about PPC is that it doesn't use the same uh, seed. Hmm. Yeah, no, we were just discussing that, and that's, I mean... I can. There's an extent to which I can understand the benefit of that in games which are as predictable as Seven Bag, where you don't want to be able, people to be able just mirror each other, I suppose. But uh, it, it's definitely a complicating factor. Mm -hmm. I guess that's sort of outweighed by just the consistency of a Seven Bag being able to being able to plan for that as its own skill set. Yeah. Which we saw on uh, excellent display here by Salted. Consistent T spin, uh, start out with a T spin triple, and then just snowballed from there. Yeah, it's interesting to see how popular these T spin openers are. RG just misdropped a, an opener, or a piece in that opener right there. He's gonna have to work back down through this. Yeah, he did have a TST setup, but misdropped the TPs into the TST setup and hunted uh, down stack it instead. Speaking of misdrops, um, salted misdrops an S piece right there and is working around it pretty well. Please, yeah, Harpy, don't sing. Um, and you know, waits for the the gravity to drop that T piece right there, finds his way into the rest of the uh, four wide setup. Oh, looks like he was expecting that to be a triple. RJ in control here, especially with that misdrop from Salted. It seems like that will be the end of the round. I have a question. Um, from like the point of view of like these players are going from one game to the next. Now I understand it is all Tetris, but like. Does it affect, like, your mental capacity for, like, they have, like, different strategies? Yes? Um, I would say that going between two different games is something that you have to practice. It's not something that comes easily. Um, there are, like, different things being, like, you know, DAS, um, AR, line clear delay that kind of, that are slightly different between each game and that mess with your rhythm of putting pieces down. I do find it difficult to switch, but after, you know, a while of working at it, it is something that I've somewhat gotten used to. Because there are, as you mentioned, sort of different things that each, each game optimizes and rewards uh, in terms of what you're going for. Some of them are easier to control for than others but the commonality of being able to understand what you can set up with the predictability of seven bag rotation mm -hmm. transfers between a lot of different modern Tetrises. Yes. I, I would say um, there are, I would say the biggest difference between different Tetris games is the macro. I have to, I haven't played too much BPT, but I do imagine that no garbage canceling is a pretty big deal. The mm -hmm. fact that you can be clearing lines and the garbage will still be sending to you means that there are some just macro differences. Like in TEC, you can just continually clear lines and then hit that zone button. This doesn't have that zone button. Um, TEC will kind of optimize for some pretty risky setups in the fact that you do have your get out of jail free button. But at the same time, uh, PVC optimizes for intricate setups because it is slow Tetris. I don't, there's like slight differences, but there are like some overlap. Uh, I, I, I just w w vaguely chuckling at the idea that this is slow in any sense of the word. <laughs> uh, but you were describing the, uh, earlier that there was a strategy of building just on top of the garbage in TEC, mm -hmm. and that's mu that, that's less of a thing here. 
Yeah, I, I mean, there is still that to an extent. And when I say slow Tetris, I mean, as opposed to Tetrio. Tetrio having no line clear delay is why most people will say like fast Tetris, slow Tetris. Got where it. we can see in here the line clear delay, the animation that appears is significantly longer than Got TDC. It. And oh, you don't the, when it highlight when it glow that that yeah, yeah, white exactly. glow. Exactly. So there is an That's in, slow? That is <laughs> that is no so there is um so Tetrio is a is a very popular like it's technically not Tetris because they don't have the trademark. Um, but there's no line clear delay. It just disappears. It just disappears. And so if we're talking pieces per second, if we're talking... Salted is an exciting salted, survival. Yeah, that is some very tough survival. If we're talking number of pieces placed per second, I think in TEC, the world record holder tops out at three. Um, and in Tetrio, it's six. Mm. Yeah, so, so a little bit faster. Literally twice as fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, you don't even probably think about how much you think mm -hmm. during that line clear delay, during that slight animation, but I promise you that you get so much time. Yeah. It, it changes your gameplay so much when you have that extra, like, second every single time the line gets cleared. Gotcha. So, so uh, as a player, do you find yourself, like, checking the queue, like, building your next two, three pieces during, that, during those clears? Oh, I mean, absolutely. In... in in Tetrio, you see the next five pieces, and you see, I believe it's four. This looks like it's five. You're absolutely planning five pieces in advance. Um, I mean, like, maybe I'm not always five pieces in advance, but the top players actually are looking at literally all five. Um, and I did have someone ask me recently about, like, how do you even look at that? It is very much color. Mm. They are very much looking at the color out of the corner of their eyes. There are um, some top players that are not even like red, green colorblind, but even like more colorblind than that, that Ooh. identify based on shape. And I don't understand how that one works, even though I've spoken to that player. Mm. I don't get it. But yeah, they're very much looking at the color of the key out of the corner of their eye. So, so, but in general, you're thinking in at least like two, three piece algorithms? Yeah, and I mean like, Especially if you're in the very beginning phase of things, it's it's very determined what you're going to do. But yeah, this line clear delay is so much that I would be looking at my queue and planning stuff out very far in advance. Got it. Wow, some very, very intensely competitive play. Yes. Three this to is three. Tied. Yeah, three three right now. Uh Salta did miss drop that opener. And is going to have to downstack what would have been a C spin setup. Wow, there's definitely so much more I have to learn to commentate this effectively. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the biggest things I'm seeing, and this is like what top players do, is just absolute greed. <laughs> it is just purely like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm being shoved up towards the top of my board. I'm going to be aggressive and I'm going to stack a T-spin here. And that is the mentality that puts you at the top of PPC. Uh, Salt is not quite finding the greed there. Being forced up to the top of the board, not finding the attack. So can, can I ask for a little color? You said a C spin setup? Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll see if either player sets it up. Yeah, so right here. Do you see on RJ's board there's a TST setup, and in the residue is a TSD setup? Okay. Yeah, so that's called a C spin. So um, popular C spin openers, what RJ just did is that is called uh, Mr. T spin. That is literally the name of the opener. I'm not kidding. Um, we pity the fool. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then another popular uh, C-spin opener in this game is MS2. Mm -hmm. um, there are also just like the opportunity for mid-game C-spin setups. It's not unusual for high-ranking players to be able to just see random C-spins in the uh, the down stack. Strong combos coming out of Salted Bread right there. Yes, combos being super important in this game. M more emphasized here than in uh, TEC, as yes. I understand. Yes. Uh, combos are specifically nerfed in zones specifically in TUC. And one of the benefits of um, combos in this style of game is that they send messy garbage. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're too salted at the top of the board here, finding some efficiency, this is an ex I can't. 
This down stack I, I can't is rough. Read. He's oh, uh, not quite finding it. Yeah, one of the benefits of a uh, sort of combo down stack is that your garbage is going to be sent in, you know, very like uh, is uneven. It, chunks. Isn't it for? Wasn't that five points? Is that? Are we not first to? What's the? What are we? What are they playing to? I thought that that was. I thought it was first to five. It could be seven. It, okay, if it's first to seven. Yeah. Then. Okay, because I can see the full. Um, you know, down here, it says match point if it's on match point. So it's Got not it. first to six. Okay, so first seven, then RJ. Yes, it could be. Beating five games to two. Uh, holding s strong lead. Salt is going to pour on the efficiency. Yes. Finding it, though. RJ definitely on the attack here, down at the bottom of that board, as Sultan is on this down stack right now. Little bit of greed. Little bit of greed from Sultan, finding the efficiency that he needs to create this next down stack. The, the so, garbage oh, making its so way good. over to, to RJ at this point. Oh, that's and so too much. Just yeah, a little bit there. too much to deal with. Salted almost had that down stack there. Didn't quite find the RNG that he needed to finish that off. And now we see match point. So this is, in fact, confirmed to be a first to seven. So yeah, that's another C-spin opener right there. Where the mm -hmm. T-spin triple leaves the T-spin double residue. It's a fun move. It's one of my favorite moves to just pull off randomly in the middle of a match when nobody expects it. Uh. I would be lying if I said I totally 100% understood everything, <laughs> but that's okay. I yeah, will learn. Yeah, there's a lot I will to learn. learn. Yeah, for sure. Tetris down the middle for Salted. Ooh, that is an unfortunate as piece miss drop. That might be the game. And yeah. And that'll do it. That'll do it. All right. RJ wins seven to three in this first to seven winner's semis. Moving to the winner's finals. So exciting. An exciting and educational <laughs> uh, PPT match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. A lot of like demonstrations of some good efficiency at the top of the board. They're both players clearly very comfortable playing against each other. A, a tale of old time is that matchup right there. Uh, and it looks like we're heading back to TEC winter semis. No, no, this is still Puyo Puyo. Oh, okay this then. Is, okay. So winter semis, uh, Baseball Boy and Sayonara. Interesting. I mostly know Sayonara as a TEC player and mm -hmm. mostly Baseball Boy as a PPC player. So I'd assume that Baseball Boy is favored in this 